Hey guys, this is Dave with Audio In Reviews. I'm pretty excited today because I finally get to share my thoughts on the Letsure Condensa 12. So I've had this for a little while now, and so far my experience with these has been, well, pretty <laughs> interesting. And for those of you who've been in the hobby for a while, you'll understand what I mean. So like I said, it's been interesting. And, and I mean interesting in a good way because it's not very often that I get to have a flagship level experience. And here's the thing, when something costs this much money before I ever even sit down to have my first listen, I will have already been through a whole myriad of emotions from the excitement of knowing I might be getting ready to experience something really great. And then within a few seconds, I might swing all the way back to the other end of the emotional spectrum and have a feeling of more of a foreboding at the possibility of it not being great. And and I think it's this way with every hobby, really. It's this constant pursuit of musical nirvana that always seems like it's just out of reach. So I guess the question I wanna to try to answer today is, is did I achieve musical nirvana? And I know that's kind of an extreme term, but you know what I mean. And I'm gonna to try to kind of do my best to answer that question. And normally this is where I'll go over what's included in the box, but I actually already have a fairly in-depth unboxing. So if you wanna watch that first, you can, so you can kind of get an idea of what kind of unboxing experience this provides you. And I think it was just a couple of videos before this one, but I'll make sure and leave a link in the description as well. But I do need to go over the design and specifications. So let's do that quickly and then we'll jump right into the sound. But I do just want to kind of forewarn you, this is gonna be a little bit of a different type of review because I'm gonna be talking about the emotional aspect of listening, at least for me personally. And again, I know that, again, for those of you who've, who've been in the hobby for a while, there is, undoubtedly an emotional aspect of of this hobby especially when you get into something that costs this much money and of course i always try to approach things objectively but there's no denying again there's no denying the emotional aspect of it when you love something this much so again it's just going to be a little bit of a different approach with this review but let's go over the specifications really quickly so the cadenza 12 comes in at $2,300 and it has 12 drivers in e each earpiece. 11 of them are a combination of both Sonian and Knowles balanced armature drivers and those cover the treble and the mids and then it also has a single 10 millimeter dynamic driver that covers the bass and sub bass and that's a lot of drivers which means you need a pretty complex crossover which this has. As a matter of fact it has a five-way partially electronic and partially physical crossover system. So from what I understand, what that means is the frequencies are separated into five sections electronically, and then also through the use of five very specifically sized boreholes. So these boreholes have specific lengths, specific diameters. So that's the physical side. And I don't know how much of the internal parts of the shell and the use of titanium come into play, but I know that can affect the sound as well. Now, as for the cable, it's constructed of 204 strands of mono, crystalline, silver, and copper. And apparently it has an extremely low end cable impedance. 
And of course, it also has swappable 4.4, 3.5, and 2.5 terminations. Now, as for the design, I have to say there is something about it that really appeals to my minimalist side. However, there isn't really that much to it design-wise. It's basically just polished titanium with the Let's Sure branding on it. Now, that being said, I absolutely love it. It's gorgeous. It's very simple. It's clean. And I love that the titanium itself is the focus of the design because the metal is, it's just a beautiful metal. And it doesn't just scream premium. It also screams durable and substantial. And especially if you're, when you're holding it, it fills again, you can tell you're, it's not heavy. They're actually pretty comfortable. There is a little bit of weight in the ear. And I did not notice that I could feel the weight of these after wearing them for a while, but they're still very comfortable. And at least for me, I never got to the point of, of experience any kind of ear fatigue or ear pain with these. And this minimalist approach isn't just with the IEMs and the cable, it's actually with the, the case itself as well. And again, if you watch the unboxing, I get a lot of close-ups of the, of the case inside and out. It's a very nice case. It's metal, feels really solid. It is a little bit heavy, but it's very, very nice. But this whole presentation from the unboxing to the materials used in its design and construction gives you this sentiment of distinction and that this is something designed and developed with great care and thought behind it. And I would expect nothing less actually at this price. Okay, let's talk about the sound of the Cadenza 12. So did I have a TOTL level listening experience with the Cadenza 12? Well, yes and no, because it doesn't quite fit my tuning preference. It's a little on the treble heavy side for my taste, but just a little. And I also do prefer a touch more bass presence. That being said, it does fall into the neutral category and has just a touch of warmth. And if you look at the frequency spectrum as a whole, what you're going to see is excellent extension on the top and the bottom, which means all of your frequencies are covered from end to end. But when you break down the sound, starting with the bass, what you're going to see is really good sub bass and bass presence with just a little mid bass warmth. And if you look at the bass curve and the way they have it tuned, what that means is you're going to get plenty of sub bass rumble and bass impact. I just wish again, I wish it was a tiny bit more. And remember, this is a dynamic driver, so it's going to deliver a more visceral or physical type of bass than you would get with like a BA driver. Although this does have balanced armature drivers, I just don't know where the crossover cuts off between the BA drivers and the dynamic driver. But this is giving me base detail and texture that rivals one of the best IEMs, base IEMs I've ever heard. And that was the Empire Ears Odin. It doesn't have nearly the quantity, but it definitely matches it in terms of base detail, texture, and speed. So all the technical side of it, this is equally as good as the Empire Ears Odin, in my opinion. So while it's a little shy in terms of base quantity, again, in terms of sheer base quality, it's among the best I've heard. And then as you start to move up the frequency spectrum into the mid bass and lower mids, you do have a little extra mid bass and lower mid presence that gives you a little extra warmth and body. But that transition from the bass to the mids is managed superbly. So there is no bass bleed or muddiness at all. Again, the mid bass and the lower mid texture and detail is excellent. So you get all of the benefits of the added weight and the richness to the vocals and instruments, but never experience any loss of detail or clarity. Then as you move into the mids, instruments and vocals sound very natural 
very detailed and completely resolved, never sounding unfinished or incomplete. Note decay is thorough and complete. And again, combined with a lower mid warmth, notes not only sound full bodied and weighty, but they also, they also have, again, really good density, detail and clarity as well. So as for the treble of the Cadenza 12, as I mentioned earlier, the treble might be a little forward for some of you in terms of quantity. That being said, the treble never got to the point of being fatiguing for me, but it, but it was right there to be honest. And any more may have been too much. That might be different for some of you. So take that into consideration. But in regards to listening fatigue, I did okay. So aside from the bass quantity being a little less than I prefer, this is my only other nitpick. Now that aside, every other aspect of the treble is excellent. So treble detail is excellent and is never sibilant or harsh or peaky. And while I wouldn't necessarily call it smooth, it's, it's still gentle enough, again, for my ears. And when I was going through my regular treble test tracks, which a couple of the tracks I use are, again, I've talked about this in other videos, Lady Be Good off of the Jazz the Pawn Shop and the song Fragments of Time off of one of the Daft Punk albums. And the cymbals on Lady Be Good sounded just superb in my opinion. And the same with Fragments of Time. His hi-hat sounded so natural and crispy. And again, cymbal strikes never ever reached the point of sounding peaky or harsh, but still maintained really great energy detail and presence. And as far as the upper treble presence, now a track I used to use all the time, and I'm kind of coming back to it because it's such a good recording. And I use this track for testing air and atmosphere. And the song is Hotel California by the Eagles, but it's the live version from 1994, I think. And what's great about this track, well, there's lots of things, but you can hear the room and the air. And if your IEMs or headphones are lacking, in those upper treble frequencies, then it's it's noticeable if you're really familiar with a track like I am. And for me, that can be the difference between feeling like I'm there or just feeling like I'm listening to a pair of IEMs and listening to music. And here's the thing. The Cadenza 12 took me there and it kept me there for a long time, song after song after song. Okay, technicalities. As I mentioned before, the detail retrieval capabilities of the Cadenza 12 are excellent. Now, one of the tracks I use for testing soundstage is Macy Gray's Annabelle off the Stripped album. You can tell it's recorded in a larger room. As a matter of fact, it was recorded in a decommissioned church in Brooklyn. So the presentation of the recording is very open and expansive and you can really hear the size of the room but at the same time the instruments the way it's recorded are very dense and they're anchored within their area and when macy gray comes in on the first line with her vocals there's no mistaking that she is front and center and with a good pair again with a good pair of iems or headphones you should be able to close your eyes and feel like they're performing right in front of you. And the Cadenza 12 did that for me as well. So when I answered the question earlier that I posed as to whether or not I had a TOTL experience with the Cadenza 12, I said yes and no. And I answered the no part, but I haven't answered the yes part yet. So here's the yes part. And I guess it's probably gonna be different for everyone as far as where that line of distinction between a good listening experience and a an absolutely transcending one. And to be honest, that line has shifted for me over the years depending on the stage of life I was in and my emotional state also. And I wonder if it's different for musicians and vocalists maybe as well. So this is all subjective and our response to music will vary based on a lot of things, our life experiences and our unique individual perspective. That being said, right now, sometimes crossing that barrier can be kind of hard for me. 
but I crossed that barrier with these. And you know what? It didn't matter that they weren't tuned to my exact preference. They did everything else good enough to still take me where I wanted to be. So of course this comes down to the question, would I recommend you spending $2,300 on the Cadenza 12? And honestly, I don't know. Because as good as these are, I know that I've had experiences like this with less expensive IMs. Not that this doesn't offer a TOTL level experience, because I think it does, but I know there are less expensive IMs out there that sound as good. But here's the thing, if you have the money and you're looking for more than just an excellent music experience, and you want to kind of take things to that next level as far as build quality, presentation, design, and again, use of the higher end materials, then, then that's fine. I, I would recommend this because this will give you that. But at the end of the day, for me personally, this has been a pretty incredible experience. And I really did have some very memorable listening sessions and I'm looking forward to many more, probably as soon as I'm, I'm done here. So if you are one of those in the hobby, again, you have the money, you want just something that's gonna give you that next level overall experience, then yeah, I recommend this. But for those of you who are on a budget, then you might want to try to, to look at your other options and see if you can find something that might give you this level of audio experience, maybe it's not going to use these types of materials. It's not going to give you this type of presentation, but they will still maybe give you a really, really excellent listening experience. But otherwise, again, if you're wanting to, if you got the money and you want to have a TOTL, not just listening experience, but it also in every other aspect, the unboxing, the materials, again, then I definitely recommend this. This will give you that for sure. So again, this has been a, a pretty incredible experience with the Cadenza 12. I hope you've enjoyed this review and I hope you don't mind me sharing a little bit uh, the, of the personal side of my listening experience with this. But that concludes this review. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. If you like my content, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. Also, if you would please like this video, share this video. I hope you guys have an awesome day.